Hi, my name's Sonia and this is my channel. See it then, see it now. If you saw my last video, you got a sneak preview of today's projects. The tree I created was a nice size and offered plenty of space to display beautiful items. So let's see how I put it together. Underneath the cloche was a felt base. The first thing I did was remove it and then I had to remove the glue as well. Sorry, I'm a little bit out of frame here, but what I did was I measured around until I found centre and then I drew around the candle holder. I then took some E6000 and I glued it to the underside of the cloche. I left it to dry overnight and then I gave it a coat of French chic al fresco wise old sage. It covered really well in one coat. Once that was dry, I took a small brush and some white acrylic paint and I just dry brushed areas with just a tiny little bit of paint on. There was no set pattern or reasoning behind how I did this. I just didn't want it to be the plain green and I thought this just broke it up a little bit. So I just went round adding it and if I thought it was a little bit thick, I took a bit off and just did it until I was happy with the effect. Once that was dry, I sealed it with a coat of Rust-Oleum Clear Finishing Wax. You just brush it on, leave it for 10 minutes, then rub it off. I bought this small fake plant from Asda and I went for this one purely because of the size of it. So the first thing I did was pull out all the greenery, which just left me with the floral form which I reused and started popping in the flowers. While I was arranging the flowers, I kept checking that it was going to fit inside the cloche. Once I had all the flowers in place, I started cutting up the greenery and slotting it in between the flowers to fill in the gaps. As you can see I'd made it a little bit big so I then had to push the pieces in further and chop a couple of bits off and just push it in to make it more compact just so that it would fit inside the cloche. And this is what I was left with which is so pretty. simple change to a plain glass vase and basically just gluing a glass bowl onto the bottom of the vase and I'm using E6000. Whenever I'm gluing pieces together I always like to make sure that I'm in the centre but because of the shape of the bowl it made measuring difficult so I had to go with what looked like centre. I could have just used the vase without adding the bowl but I wanted it to be taller bowl just adds a little bit to it. Once the glue was dry, I filled the vase with potpourri. I could have just tipped it in, but I wanted to get it as full as possible and fill in all the gaps, so I took a bit longer and put the more interesting pieces of potpourri at the sides. letters for a long time. I think they were a housewarming gift when we moved into this house in 2006. Anyway, I decided it was time for them to have a makeover. I started by painting two of the letters green and two of the letters grey and then I changed my mind on what I wanted to do with it and so I decided to decoupage them. 
The first thing I needed to do was separate the napkin. Napkins are often three ply, so I needed to remove two of the layers so that you're just left with the one layer that is really thin and see-through. The best way I've found to remove the layers is to wet your fingers and then press in the corner of the napkin and then as you pull your fingers away the napkin tends to stick to your fingers and pull the two layers pull two of the layers apart um, and then of course once you've got one layer off you repeat that and do it again to get the second layer off. Once I had my single layer, I started taking parts of the napkin and deciding where to place them on the letters. I brushed a layer of Mod Podge onto the letter, placed the napkin on and then I dab it down with a small piece of sponge. I found using a sponge the easiest. Some people use like some cling film or a sandwich bag. Once the napkin gets wet from the glue, and you touch it with your fingers, it sticks to your fingers and you'll drag it, you drag the napkin or it rips or it creases and so using a sponge or the cling film will stop that from happening. I find it best to tear the pieces of napkin I want to use. I find that the pieces blend together nicely rather than when you cut it and you have a straight edge. I take a small brush wet it and draw around the part of the napkin that I want to use um, and the water helps the napkin to tear in the right place. If you do try this though, don't have your brush too wet because otherwise you just dump all the napkin and then it's no good. I originally painted these grey. The reason I picked the green and the grey was because those were the colours that were in the bathroom. Unfortunately, if you decoupage on a dark colour, the napkin doesn't really show very well, um, so it wasn't really going to work with this dark colour. So I got out the white paint and I painted in white. And this is the thing with crafting. You can change your mind part way through and just completely go in a different direction, that's fine. Um, as long as you're happy with the end result, it doesn't matter how you got there, does it? I used Johnson's Chalky Furniture Paint in the colour Cushion White and it took two coats. Once the paint was dry, I decoupaged these two letters using the same napkins as I used on the green letters. Once the napkin was dry, I sealed each letter with a coat of Mod Podge. I'm not sure if this can be classed as a DIY, I thought it was cute as it was, but I wanted to add a bit of colour. So I painted the face in, you've guessed it, French sheet white old sage, I do have a colour scheme going on here. Once 
Once that was dry, I sealed it with a coat of clear matte varnish and that was it. So now you've seen how I put the individual items together, let's pop them on the tray and see it now. If you want to try one of these projects for yourself, I've left a list of products in the description box below. If you like this video, please hit the like button and leave me a comment. Let me know which one was your favourite. As the big C, Christmas, is hurtling towards us at great speed, I have some great Christmas crafts coming. If you don't want to miss these, please subscribe. To keep up to date with future uploads and to see past projects, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, bye!